All right, we're going to call this meeting to order. Uh, in compliance with California Executive Order AB 361, members of the Board of Directors and members of the public will participate in this meeting in person or by teleconference. For those attending by teleconference, the call-in information for the Board of Directors and the public is as follows. I'm not going to read that, Tara. Um, any, mem any member of the public participating by teleconference may email public comments to the administrative center, ButteFloodControl.org, and, and comments will be read from each member of the public. During this period, uh, modified Brown Act requirements, Feather River West Levy Financing Authority will use the best efforts to swiftly resolve requests for reasonable modifications or to accommodations of individuals with disabilities consistent with the Americans with Disabilities Act in resolving any doubt whatsoever in favor of accessibility. Do we have any members of the public that are on teleconference, Tara? No. You take a roll call, please, Tara. Charlie Hoppin? Yes. Mike Morris? Here. Matt Conant? Here. Thank you. Very good. Mike Morris, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I had, I had my full ration for the day. Salute, pledge. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I don't have any, do we have a member of the public here? Anybody wants to make a public comment? Not hear any. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to either modify or approve the consent calendar as presented. I'll make the motion. I'll second it. All those in favor, Tara, better do a roll call. Tara? Mike Morris? Yes. Charlie Hoppin? Yes. Matt Conant? Yep. Yes. Thank you. Presentation discussions of action items. Approval of resolutions related to the formation of the Feather River West Levy Financing Authority Operation and Maintenance Assessment District. A resolution declaring the results of the property owner protest ballot proceeding. A resolution approving the formation of the assessment district confirming the engineer's report, assessment diagram, and assessments. Thank you, Chair Hoppin. I, this is Seth Brazell. I'll go ahead and... Uh, and uh, pr provide the staff report on that. Are you going to read all the resolutions too, Seth? Uh, no, I was going to give you a little highlight of it uh, <laughs> so that it's clear of what they're, uh, what they're handling here. So this, um, uh, as you noted, the recommendation is the approval of these uh, two resolutions. Uh, we've uh, pulled them together and the, and the board can consider them in, in one motion if, uh, if, if, so, if it so desires. So I'll, I'll go over the first resolution. Th this one is declaring the ballot proceeding um, results and um, a as reflected in the resolution in the staff report the uh, the assessment ballots were uh, tabulated by our assessment engineer and uh, the results of the valid um, uh, uh, submitted ballots are shown here um, the, the the yes votes um, in uh, weighted in proportion to the proposed assessment uh, exceeded the no votes and so therefore of the ballot uh, um, as a result of that, a majority protest did not exist, and therefore the formation of the assessment district can proceed. So given those results, then you can move on to the second resolution, uh, which is a resolution of forma formation. Uh, this resolution makes certain findings that we conducted all the appropriate proceedings as required by Proposition 218 and the Benefit Assessment District Act of 1982 all the noticing, balloting, um, the public hearing, and the preparation of the required reports were all, um, uh, were all done in, uh, in requirements uh, with the law. Um, this resolution then, upon making those uh, findings in the recitals, then goes forward and adopts the engineer's report and the supporting assessment diagram. And it directs the executive director to file the necessary reports with the county in support of future levy assessments. Um, we're not calling for a levy of uh, the assessments uh, in this fiscal year, but um, you know we we would need to provide those uh, that documentation in the future, and so it uh, authorizes the the executive director to, to to take that necessary action. 
Um, so essentially that, uh, that would conclude the formation process uh, of the assessment district. So that this, uh, this is before the board today to, con to, to consider. And uh, that uh, concludes my brief presentation on In the In all matter. seriousness, do you want me to read the resolutions? Or? Uh, no, you do not need to res <laughs> you do not need to read the resolutions. Or ask counsel. Um, no, <laughs> yeah, but you, you, yeah, no need to do that. Um, but um, uh, yeah, what we'd be looking for is a, is a motion um, adopting the resolutions as recommended by staff. You I'll make the before, motion. Before we move forward on this, when you look at the margin that we won by, I realize we don't have a big audience here, but if it had not been for Mike and Amina and Drew Stresser, this simply would not have happened. And, uh, you know, they intentionally asked the board members to stay out of it. I don't know if that was because they were afraid of what I might say or whether it was just protocol, but it, had the two of you not done what you did, this would not have passed. And I know there were an awful lot of very unpleasant moments there. I know it was a growing experience for both of you. Probably neither of you will ever tackle a 218 vote again. Uh, <laughs> you know, for a young person like Drew, I think it was a life-changing experience to have to deal with people that were inclined to be opposed to something when we had a very reasonable reason for doing this. So I, I can't tell you two any more sincerely than I am. Thank you. I really appreciate your, your help. It was invaluable. Me too. I'd like to ditto that. I mean, I think this, I didn't realize this thing would be that close. I didn't even realize it was that close until I just saw the final number just now. Uh, and I know I talked to you at the fair, Drew, and you were saying it's awful close, and I'm going, oh, God, no. We better make this thing pass because it really needs to happen. The last thing we want to have is the state of California in charge of this flood control age, uh, flood control operations for the county on the ongoing process because, I mean, we all know what wonderful partners they are. <laughs> and I'll leave it at that. So thank you guys. Yeah, thank you both. Are your did your shoulders grow anymore? <laughs> Drew's, getting, Drew's getting gray hair. <laughs> yeah, I noticed there was a couple in there, Drew. I come quick. Seth, thank you very much. Uh, we need to vote on this in two segments, I assume. Uh, no, the, the board can make one re rec one motion approving both resolutions. So you can I'll make the motion to approve both. I'll second it. Very good. Tara, we better take a count on this one. <laughs> Charlie Hoppin? Yes. Matt Conant? Yeah. I Mike Morris? Yes. Thank you. Thank you all. You know, Mike, I understand that Sutter County is going to need a 218 thing here before too long. I Now that you're so seasoned, I'm... <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> I think we're trying to avoid that. Very good. The resolutions pass. I, there's no further business before us. We'll, well uh, actually, uh, oh. th there is one more item on the agenda, the Sabufka Services update. Item four. Go ahead, Seth. Right, th thank you. Um, so what we put together today under this services update um, are some items for the board's future consideration. Um, at this point in time, um, you know, the, the, main, the main task before the board has, uh, has with that prior action is, uh, has uh, taken place. And so now this agency needs to uh, essentially uh, deal with some additional items. And I wanted to, to uh, present those items for the board's consideration at future meetings. Um, I'll go ahead and walk through this list. I've got a list of, uh, of about eight items that I think the board should, um, uh, to, to, we, we should consider uh, for future um, action. So one of, the, one of the first things that needs to happen as it relates to the assessment is an appeals policy. Um, so we'd, we would want to formalize that and bring that to the board uh, and explain what, how we, we would, staff might recommend um, handling that and then have the board take an action to, to formally address that. None of these items, uh, I should preface that, none of these items that I'm going to speak, speak to today are real urgent items. They don't need to happen at the very next meeting or anything like that. And so um, I think the appeals policy probably should because if someone's going to appeal 
they're either going to do it now or they'll do it after they get the initial bill, which is probably more likely. But I'd hate to have somebody call and want to go through an appeals policy and say, well, we don't really have one. Exactly. So we'll uh, need to get it on the agenda uh, okay. for the next board meeting, I think. Okay. I, I think Charlie's right. I think you want that done sooner rather than later because, like he said, the last thing you want to do is to have somebody call up, oh, we don't have a policy yet. <laughs> right, <laughs> that would be right. and that's already, that's already been the case. Folks asked questions about their ballots, and then they wanted to understand, well, you know, if this passes, what am I going to, you know, what... Uh, how do I handle that issue? Because I don't, I don't agree with it. So I, I, I understood, and yeah, we, we could done these before, Seth, and where we don't really have, you know, a staff of our own to speak of. Uh, if you could prepare that language. Yeah, so so that's actually one of the later items on the uh, on the uh, on this discussion is as how to provision for staff support uh, going forward. So uh, absolutely. Right. Yeah, so then the, the other thing we need to work through is the, is uh, figuring out how we're going to handle the annual administration process. Most agencies would, would contract with a, with a firm to handle that. Will Dam Financial Services, for example, handles that for Sutter Butte Flood Control Agency. And within our contract with HDR, um, the, the first year of, of assessment support um, is included. I think we need to reconcile that, that contract through Sutter Butte um, and, and figure out uh, where we sit with the budget on that and whether or not it, it makes sense to move forward and have um, uh, to negotiate a, a, a contract with Wildran directly through, through Fowlifa so that it can handle that assessment administration. So that's an item that needs to take place prior to the first uh, year of, of levying the assessments. The other thing, obviously, that needs to be monitored by the agency, this is really an, um, an item for LD1, as, as, as you're certainly aware, uh, Chair Hoppin, um, but this is just something that, that the board should be kept aware of, is the status of the um, uh, Assumption of levy maintenance responsibility by MA3. Um, the current target is to ha have that in place by 2324. And so, the, again, this isn't an action for this board, but something for them to monitor. The other um, thing that, that needs to be handled at some point prior to uh, receiving assessments so that we know what to do with the money is um, to formalize the, uh, the split between, or the, how the, how Fralifa will apportion the revenue that it receives uh, to itself to cover administrative expenses and then to uh, LD1 and LD9. Uh, I think there, we just need to formalize that process so that um, it's, it, everyone understands what needs to happen once the, once the money arrives. Um, and then the timing of those payments relative to when they come, when they're apportioned to Fralifa from, uh, from the county. Um, the other thing that, that needs to take place um, is uh, to, to finalize the approach and process for uh, the repayment to Sabufka for the services provided um, by Sabufka to, to get through to the process where we are today. Um, the amount of that needs to be finalized, and I think that'll be a function, uh, as you alluded to, um, how, how much more work Sutter Butte does on behalf of Frau Lifa, uh, and when, when we cut that off. So if there is a desire to you know, facilitate the development of the... Um, of the appeals policy and, and other activities, maintain, you know, support the board, support legal services been, until, um, for example, until the uh, assessment revenues come in, then we should, we should maybe make a projection of what that budget would be, set that amount, and then incorporate into an amendment to the services agreement um, the re repayment process. Right now, the, uh, the services agreement between Farleaf and Sutter Butte speaks to this concept, but doesn't lay out the, the finalized terms because we didn't know what they would need to be uh, at the time. Seth, where none of us sitting here at the dais have gone through this before, and you have, would you suspect that there would be a situation where we could contract with Sabufka to do administrative work, or would that fall on the county? I just, you know, there was concern expressed when we were going through this process that we were forming a new agency, and I downplayed that as much as I possibly could um, because I don't see this as an agency, if you will, in the shape of a lot of agencies. Right. Um, and I would, you know, as much as we all love Terra, I would hate to have a Terra of my own uh, for the finance authority. So. That's something that needs to be discussed and mechanisms that would be practical without. 
Yeah, I think they're, they're in my mind, uh, just speaking from my own uh, view of this, and uh, this doesn't represent Sutter Buttes or anything, but I think there's a short-term process and then something more long-term, and that might not be very something different. So in the short-term, until there's revenue received by the agency, perhaps it makes sense for Sabufka to uh, continue to provide that support. And then, you know, once you get some of your formal processes in place, like annual assessment administration, the process of apportioning the revenues, um, then it can be something more long-term where Sumufka is not involved. So I think getting some of the initial items uh, dealt with. So I, 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 you know, you can potentially leverage uh, the, the administrative infrastructure that LD1 has uh, in, in a more longer-term role. Charlie, the, the other thing, too, that, I, that I'd like to eventually get into is, you know, we, it's really confusing to the to public the difference between LD1, LD9, and Sabufka. So if we're using Sabufka's um, staff, keep on using them. It might be a little uh, confusing to a lot of people, too. So well, we need a look. And the thing that was my next question to Seth, which, it, it was my understanding, Seth, and I may be incorrect, that a portion of LD9's revenue will still come from an ad valorem tax with an augmentation uh, from the process we just voted on. Could you go over that a little bit? Because if somebody asked me how that was going to work today, <laughs> I would have a speech impediment. Just send them to Drew. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so that, so that the... The, the net amount of revenue needed after, of, so when you look at the total cost of maintenance and the amount of revenue that, that generally comes in to, for, for the ad valorem tax, the net amount is what we're levying uh, through the assessment. And so that, that uh, apportionment of property tax is going to remain and continue to go to LD9. And so that, when, when we look at that split of revenue uh, that comes in, we need to look at the... the that that remaining revenue that would still come to LD LD nine in terms of how to how to spread it, so that each agency still has the full budget that they need to maintain uh, their their portion of the levy system. So the ad valorem will remain in effect in the correct reality. Correct, correct. That's and that should be in uh, you know in, in perpetuity in, in any form uh, moving forward. Um, so, you know, again, uh, these are just items that we think should be brought to the board for further discussion. And um, so, with respect to the administrative approach uh, for the agency, so moving on to item number six, um, you know, the, the JPA lays out um, the, the staff of the agency, the executive director. Uh, looking back at everything, every meeting we've had, we've never appointed a, a, an executive director for that position. I think that needs to take place. Um, and, um, and, and that would fall into how we handle that, that uh, administration going forward. Uh, so that you have someone on behalf of the, the agency that can, you know, if it's not meeting, can, can handle the regular day-to-day -day business of the agency uh, in between meetings. That's essentially been Sutter Butte th thus far. Um, but um, moving forward, I, I, um, I, I think this is something that, that, that you have the opportunity to, uh, to take advantage of. There again, in my opinion, that would be kind of a unique role because I wouldn't see that as being a full-time position for anyone. No, I 100% agree. 100% agree. Exactly. It's a. It's just another business card and a, and a hat somebody else puts on at some point in time. Um, but but that that a position should be appointed so that that person can in, can bind the agency based on the direction of of the board if if, if so need be. But the only um, other t other thing too. Shirley uh, and everybody else, we don't want to have one. We don't want to have a, many hats on one person to, to where everything falls at one time. Yeah, it's it's certainly not uncommon for many agencies to have um, uh, the staff of another agency, or you know, like for example, the the you know city manager of the city of Yuba City may serve in many many roles with respect to the other agencies that. That they involve that they're involved with, for example, um, the redevelopment agency. When when that you know, was actually a separate entity uh, of, of the city, and, and the city manager was the director of that uh, that agency. So it's it's not uncommon for 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 staff of of JPA certainly to to have uh, that extra role placed on them. So and when we have an, a meeting where this comes up, you might discuss that with 
Andrea and, and, and Michael and kind of lay out different approaches to it so we don't just come up with some idea that's not functional from a board standpoint. Yes, yeah, so as I got to the end of this list, my, 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 my parting remark, which I'll, which I'll interject now, is that I think it'd be worthwhile to work for, for, for current staff to work with the chair to set, to, to, to figure out when we can handle each of these issues and bring them back to the board at an appropriate time. Um, I don't think we, the, the board would likely need to meet on a regular monthly basis. I think it would be more, let's pick off these items uh, in working with the chair uh, on when we want to bring them back, when it's uh, convenient for the board, um, and, and based on your your feedback and, and uh, expectation on timing when these things can be handled, and we can convene a meeting of the uh, of the board similar to to what we do now, and and handle these items one at a time or or together as need be. Well, one thing we can put off the repayment thing indefinitely. I'm not in any big hurry on that. <laughs> and through the chair, uh, I would like to. My, my thoughts on that would be to knock off one at a time because I know how long it takes us to iron things out and like to get this done as quickly as possible so it's done. Does that make, does that make any I sense? I mean, this is kind of new territory for some of us and we want to make sure it's done correctly, but I would definitely prioritize the uh, appeal process uh, sooner than later. Understood. Um, and, and then one of the other final things we need to take care of, um, at, you know, prior to levying of the assessment is establishment of the treasury for the, uh, for the uh, entity, uh, for Frau Lifa. Um, it, it, you know, generally most uh, JPAs that have the county as a member would, would, would hold their, um, their treasury with, uh, with the county. Um, the, the JPA law uh, allows for, uh, you know, essentially the, the JPA agreement says you'll comply with JPA law with respect to the money. Uh, the JPA law requires that it's either a CPA, so you can use an outside firm as long as that person is a licensed CPA, or the, the county treasurer. And so, we, you know, we just wouldn't want to assume anything, but would bring that back to the board. We can approach the county treasurer. Most county treasurers treasurers have an, a, a typical agreement they would have the entity sign to be able to handle money. It's just kind of like opening an account at a bank, and um, we'd bring that back. But I'm certain there's going to be an action associated with that to approve that contract. Well, they're handling an accounting function for us now, so. Um, well, so for the districts, uh, yeah, for the LD, for the LDs, that's right, that's right. And with respect to uh, like Sutter Butte, for example, though we we, we uh, Sutter Butte keeps all of its uh, treasury with the city of Yuba City. Um, so st uh, stepping back a little bit, we're we're assuming that we're going to get the MA three annexation done prior to the next, you know, this tax Three's round 20. setting in. If that, if we're delayed. Um, through LAFCO or anything else, I and mean, I don't see any protests coming down, but you know how bureaucratic things take longer than you think they should take. Will we have a mechanism to deal with that in the interim, or how do how does that work? Well, essentially, the the current uh, assessments for LD one and LD um, for LD one would not. I think the resolution that the LD1 board adopted said they, they would continue to levy that until the Frau Lifa board levied its uh, assessment. So you'd essentially, you'd have the existing mechanisms would stay in place until such time as the, the Frau Lifa one could. So but the MA3 landowners would pay their assessment to DWR in the interim? Correct. Okay. Correct. Exactly. I mean, the levy has to be maintained. And until LD1 assumes responsibility for it, my assumption is that um, the, the state is going to continue to maintain it, but also expect f money from property owners. And Mike, do you understand how that trade-off will work? Have you been through that at all? <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, the problem is it's going to be kind of in midstream probably. And, you know, the question is going to come up, or certainly from me, if it is midstream, and there are there has been an assessment paid by the MA3 landowners to the Department of Water Resources, and we take over. Are they going to refund us a pro rata share of that, or how it's going to be? Because it's not going to come on some abscission point where it's just nice clean cut. I don't think. Yeah, I think. I mean, logically, I mean. I've Chaminard happens to be in the audience. He might have more experience with this, but logically, I think, you know, they're, they're presumably the, the state, when they develop the budget, when the flood maintenance office develops the budget for the MA, 
then they have a term through which that that service would be that they're budgeting for. So if it's an annual year from certain one month to them, another month, they would be responsible for that levy through that that term. And then your your response so if LD one took responsibility for the levy, it would be after that term was complete, so that you don't have and that at the beginning of a fiscal year, basically. That's a good question, though. <laughs> Right. I thought your question was more about, hey, if you've if you've included a charge, then and we take over, we're not going to take over till you're you're done spending that, that money. That was part of it. But Sean's explanation yeah. goes along. Yeah. The, the there should be no expectation of having the the, the revenue is on the same comes from the same property tax bill. And so what we what we said is that that the Fralifa assessment won't show up on the tax bill until we know that there won't be an MA3 charge nor an LD1 charge. Yeah, in any given fiscal year um, that we have to have that decision made by August 10th. Statute requires that any special district levying uh, a charge on a property tax bill must submit that role to the auditor controller of the county by August 10th. So an understand, like basically our, our deadline uh, for the 23-24 tax year would be August 10th of 2023. So we'd have to understand where we are with respect to the to the assumption of levy res maintenance responsibility, or LD1 would need to understand where it would be with respect to the assumption of levy maintenance responsibility by that date. Now that there may be a process that the state goes through to say, just in case we don't figure that out by then, that they adopt a budget. But you know, we'd have to understand that they would not be levying a charge on the 2324 tax bill if Fralifa is submitting the role to uh, the um, to the county by that August 10th deadline. Sean, didn't you say this wasn't the only one where the the um, change has been in the direction we're going? That some of the other, the majority of them have been through default, but there's been other MAs that have been taken over by LDs. But as I understand, that's a much more convoluted process than what we're going through. I mean, it's just. This is a really an LD1 issue. Yeah. There might be an initial step where we dissolve, and then we transfer over this agreement to LD1, and we maintain the MA, it would still remain as MA3 to LD1. And then later on, if we have more time, we'll go back to modify LD1, water code section, section of water code section, that kind of thing. I mean, LD1 and LD1. Yeah, that's something I learned the other day, and you may have already known it, that the LAFCO process doesn't include the levy. It doesn't include MA3. The LAFCO process is for the benefit of the benefit area. Is that not correct, Sean? Yeah. I hope you made a mistake. We'll be assimilating the benefit area of MA3. You said LD1. Right. 
Right. The, the the lab, but the LAFCO doesn't include the levy. Basically, no, that's just turned over. Sorry, to interrupt you. Yeah. So, so again, this is something I think that the the Fralifa board would want to monitor, but it's it's really going to be an action of of LD one, and so you know just understanding where they are so that you can know when to trigger the assessment. That's really the the function here and, and the the responsibility here. Um, so uh, again, what what uh, what I th think might be useful is for for Sabufka staff to work with um, the chair. We since we're a three member board, we have an ad hoc committee, so a committee of one um, to to agendize these items as they're uh, as they're fleshed out and ready to be uh, available for consideration. That's essentially what um, what I think would be the best approach at this point in time. Uh, but, but again, we wanted to lay these items out so that it, there was a clear understanding by the board that there are there's still still stuff to do uh, now that we've gotten through the the big hurdle of the assessment. But um, I think we can we can all uh, you know pat ourselves on the back and, and and take a deep breath and then sort of move in and handle these things as as uh, they're fleshed out and available to be considered. So that that concludes my presentation. Um, if there's any feedback or, I mean, with respect, thank you for the feedback in terms of, uh, you know, the desire to get the appeals policy presented to the board as quick as possible. I think what, what um, we'll do is work with, uh, with, with you, Chair Halpin, to, to lay out some options uh, that we, we can, on the process and how Fratley can handle that so that we are at least uh, are clear with the public uh, who, while this is still fresh in their mind, if there are folks that have concerns that we can address. Uh, in terms of our normal uh, approach here, I just wanted to give the board to uh, uh, a snapshot of where we sit with respect to budgeted versus um, costs and cost to date. Uh, so we, we've got uh, invoices from HDR through April, so there's still a bit uh, more in terms of cost there. So this is a little bit behind uh, in terms of uh, dollar amounts, but you know, taking into consideration the uh, amendment uh, to the HDR task order uh, for additional outreach work, uh, the budget was 663,000. We've incurred cost of 451 to date. So there's still quite a bit of remaining budget and I think we will definitely come in under, uh, uh, under that budget. Um, this is where we sit with respect to the HDR task order uh, through, in, through services through April. Um, so the, the task order one is essentially complete. Uh, task order two uh, of the total um, a budget authorized of the 300 and 58,000, we've incurred about 200,000 to date, but remaining to get those remaining costs. We'll keep providing this to the board um, at whatever meeting becomes the next meeting so that we understand where we sit with the, with the budget. You won't really send us a lot more bills, will you, Mike? He won't. One more. <laughs> One more to finish it up. All right, that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Any comments? I know we don't necessarily have a public forum here, but if the folks in the audience would like to say anything, it would be beneficial, I'm sure. Sean? All right, thanks. <laughs> I just want to thank staff and everybody involved in this. I mean, this was a big deal. I've never been through it before. Don't want to go through it again. <laughs> but I just want to thank, your, thank all the staff and everybody that helped out. Thank you. Yeah, it was interesting being involved in a process that I had no experience with whatsoever in asking people for more money when it was necessary and all that. It was uh, not something I'd want to do again either, but I'm glad we got it done. <laughs>